I would like to say thank you to the visitors here and thank you for inviting us for this conference. Thank you. In, in 1981, the Pindabi people moved back to their country. Um, most of them came out of Papunya, Haas Bluff, and outstations around that area. Um, many of them had only come in out of their country uh, 20, 30 years earlier, and um, ever since they had come in, they were keen to get back out to their country. So in 81, they moved back out there. Um, Initially, the health care was provided by LIAFA Congress, which was the Aboriginal Community Controlled Health Service, which with Congress in Alice Springs, with the help of Congress in Alice Springs, had been established at Papunya. So the Pindabi people, when LIAFA Congress started in 1978, the Pindabi people were living in that area and they knew about Aboriginal Community Controlled Health Services. Initially, LIAFA Congress provided support to them while they were uh, for the people out uh, at Kintor, where they uh, established the first uh, community. Um, but then there was some community politics at, um, at um, Papunya and LIAFA Congress uh, folded that was taken over by the Northern Territory Health Department. And then, but the, the, the Pindaby people were really keen to have their own health service. They were out in their country, they were they felt they, had con they were taking control of their lives. They wanted this a school and they wanted their own health service. So again, with the help of Central Australian Aboriginal Congress, uh, they uh, put in a submission to the Commonwealth Government. And um, at uh, the end of 1983, the Commonwealth Government announced that they would be funding um, the health service to be based at Kintor, which uh, the Pintaby people called the Pintaby Homelands Health Service, because they saw Kintor as just being the first stage that they were repopulating their country. Um, for all their homelands. Um, um, I had heard this story. I'd, um, I'd worked at Congress and then the Pitjantjara Homelands Health Service and uh, then with the Australian mob over in Western Australia and had come back to Alice Springs in '83 to help set up Ngunnapur Health Council on the uh, APY lands um, and was thinking maybe I'd, uh, once that got started, I'd, uh, I'd work down there, but then I heard that funding had come through for the, for the health service at Kintor and I thought, yes, I'd like to go and work out there. So I applied for the job and um, in December 83, I got flown out to, uh, to Kintor um, along with uh, two or three nurses who were applying for two nursing positions and, um, and another doctor who was applying for the job, that was Dr Peter Tate, who many people would know here. Um, he's a long-term Congress uh, GP. Um, he was known to the Kintor mob because he'd be, um, Congress had been providing support to them out there and he'd been visiting out there regularly and he was a very good GP so I knew the uh, competition was pretty stiff. But during my interview when I told them I had a pilot's licence I saw everybody's <laughs> eyes light up and I thought yes I've got this job and sure enough they offered me the job and that pilot's licence turned out to be useful later. Uh, in 84, um, 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 when, uh, when a, a, an aeroplane became available to help uh, uh, provide health care out to Kiwikura, uh, where people moved during 84. Um, so the, the full team really started out there, I think, on the 1st of February 1984. So there was myself um, as the first GP, there were two nurses, and there were uh, three very good health workers there. There was Marlene, who was working then as there as a health worker, and and I can say that I've worked with lots of health workers over the years, but I would say that Marlene Nambajimba here is one of the best that I've ever worked with. She's an outstanding Aboriginal health worker. <laughs> the, the other two um, um, health workers were also very good health workers. They were the parents of Victor. Um, um, Victor's dad was a, a Ngunkari and a health worker and a very... Um, respected senior man in the community and uh, his mother was uh, also there working um, as, a, as a senior woman um, as, uh, as part of the health team there. Uh, soon, after, uh, soon after that two new health workers were appointed uh, because there were plans uh, for, for a significant proportion of the, um, of the community, of the Kintor community, to relocate further west out to Kiwikura. 
and they knew that, that um, the, the expectation is that there was that the Pinnaby Homelands Health Service would uh, provide the health care there, but they would need to have health workers on the ground there. So two people who uh, were amongst the group that were planning to move to Kiwikura, Kiwikura were appointed early in 84 to start learning about, about health work so that when they did move out there, they'd be able to just um, uh, hit the ground running as Aboriginal health workers. There was also a very highly regarded Ngunkiri, whose um, um, portrait uh, you saw there um, um, in, that, uh, in that film, um, who was living at, Kiwi, at uh, Kintor at that time. His name is Dr George, or he's known as Dr George Japuljari. Um, he and I started working together very closely um, soon after I started there, and I remember there was a community meeting um, quite early on in the piece um, where people said, we're, playing, we're paying this doctor, but we're not paying that doctor, and yet they're working together, so we should pay him a salary as well. So he uh, became a salaried member of the team, and uh, he continued to work um, as a Ngunkiri there with the Pinnaby Hamlet Health Service for many years. After I'd left and other doctors came, um, he would work there um, alongside those doctors as a, um, the, the two doctors. It was a system that worked extremely well. Um, so we started off with pretty small beginnings. You saw the old clinic up there. It was just a modified demountable, um, but it was um, uh, it effective. It served a purpose, and we were able to provide um, a reasonable quality of healthcare. I think with such a good team. Um, in those days, uh, the big health problem we were dealing with in those early days, in the early 80s, was um, um, infant health. Um, the, young, the, the little kids um, uh, failing to thrive and just recurrent diarrhoea was the big problem. And every morning in the clinic, what a funny that um, we'd see all these mothers coming in with the babies with diarrhoea. And so soon after we started, we created a different space for a mother and child sort of um, area where the health workers and one of the nurses could sort of work with the mothers and the babies to, to help them and we could do, deal with other issues uh, in the main part of the clinic. Um, and there were a lot of challenges, there were a lot of dramas, there were a lot of health problems to deal with, but it was also fun, because I, I could say that Victor's father was one of the funniest men I've ever known. And so a lot of the time, we were just rolling round on the floor, literally laughing at his stories and his antics. But yeah, he was just, he was a very, very funny man. Um, so, you know, that was the story and I'll let others sort of tell their parts of it. But can I just say that there was an incident that happened um, soon, not too long after I'd arrived out there. I mean, I'd come out there and um, I was just struck by the sheer beauty of the country out there. It's the, the Gibson Desert, um, named after... Um, uh, an early explorer who uh, perished through lack of water, so it's, it's harsh country, and it's, but it's starkly beautiful, and I was really impressed with that country. And um, I was driving with um, a Dapple Jarry that passed away, who was working as a health worker, out to Kiwikura when people were just starting to, to go out there and um, put the buildings there so that people can move out there. And we had a bowl of uh, pura between us. Pura is a very succulent bush food from out there and so we were munching on pura as we went out and uh, I said is the pura growing out around Kiwikura and he said no no it's not growing there because we haven't been there for 20 years and we haven't been burning the country but now we're going back we'll start burning the country and it'll come back and it was the same at Kintor he said but you know, when we came back out here a couple of years ago there wasn't any pura but we started burning the country and now we've got our bush food again so I realized that you know, when that exodus happened out of Papunya and Haas Bluff for the Pintaby mob going back to their country, it wasn't, a, they didn't see it as going back into a desert. They were going back to their country. They were going back to a garden, an untended garden, but it was, they were going to start tending it, again, tending it again. And they're still out there. They're still tending the garden, and they're still very proud of having their own health service. And I'm certainly very proud to have been part of it back then, 30 years ago, and now I've got the privilege of, of continuing to have that association with them as a board member. So thanks very much. Mm -hmm. Hello, everyone. My name is Marlene. But I'm born in the bush.
Western Australia in the desert. I walked of Papanyi when I was young. I went to school. When I went to school in Papanyi, I seen a lot of people taking different language. And that's why my families, other families, they come from Bush. And I went back to, that's why we'll move back to our own country, our own land, to Kintro. 1981, I start for Ellsberg, and I finish 2011 for Ellsberg, and I started for Western Desert Dialysis. I'm a president. Yeah, but my background, I used to Ellsberg in 1981, we'll staying in the MPs. No store, no car, staying in the windbreak, waiting for, give us houses. A lot of people used to write him a letter to, to Canberra help us. We got a lot of kids. We're waiting with the tent. Sometime morning we'll go on to the hand pump and pump water, wash him with them, clothes, clean them kids. I used to wash him bottle on the outside in the clinic. We had a little carabine and six battery and I used to talk on the radio to Bupanyi and to BZD, to Dr. Blind, help us. But we, that time we had no air airport really hard time we live, living and school. They used to in the, go to school in the MPs and talk box with the books. And I used to um, hang in kids in the tree, in the bag, in the scale, wine kids. Really hard time. Give them cut sack medicine, write them a name. Talk on the radio to Papanyi, talk to the government, visit him every fortnight. And we got no car. We got one tractor and one, two hours from white men working to help us that time. We ring, I used to ring to Papanyi, come and visit him, you know, sick ones, give him right medicine. And one of them, my elsewhere again, this father and this mother, we're working long time, 1982, 1993. We're working really hard with the kids. We got no vegetable, no trucks, no food. We go hunting, find them kangaroos, some people, young people, for shooting. Kangaroo, really hard. On one big truck, bring to to Kinto, to store, put them in a little tin house, and big truck was with the generator, save a little bit meat. I remember, really hard time. But now today's, we got a airport. Police station, school, art gallery, school, and renal. Because I went to Canberra, I took to give us no clinic. Because a lot of spiders running around, mass, cockroach, leaking in the water on the clinic, a lot of trucks. That's why I went to Canberra. Can you help us? Give us new clinic. Give us, you know, something, money, you know, help us to fit. Now we got new clinic now. They give us one million dollar for that clinic. I went to tell them a true story too, in the Canberra. And I'm working for, for 
for West Indies and Dialysis. I'm a chairman. I work for Mount Area, Alban, for my people. I'm still here. Yeah, thank you for my story. I just want to share a little bit about my background. I'm an I'm a assistant teacher. I work at the school, but I represent the clinic and the board. And my name is Monica Robinson, and I'm a student, a graduate from Bachelor College. Recently, I graduated, and after that, I went for my award for my finals, empty award, but didn't make it. But I just want to share some stories about the history of Kinto, how Kinto was clinic came. It was in 1980. The people, people were talking. Our people, we had a lot of old people, strong people, and they talked with a clinic. And our people fought because our kids were dying. Some had diarrhea, and that's why. They gave us the clinic story that came out from David and uh, Marlene. That was true because we have to, we had a hard time and some of us didn't want to stay, some wanted to go back to Pupanya. But still the Pindipi people stayed at Kinto and fought for their lives, fought for the clinic, and keep on talking and made the clinic come up. I just want to say a little bit of story about the background of the clinic. That's all I just want to share. Hello, my name is Victor Robinson, and I'm from Kinto. That we were in Darwin, we were, we were doing a course in Darwin, and we had the people moving out to Kinto in the 80s. And after that, we came back, we flew out from Darwin, and we stayed one night at Puponya, and my father, he moved out with caravan with, uh, to help the people with medicines. And from there, I saw my father when I got in to Kinto. We stayed there at Kinto. Then he so uh, David, and he was on the radio, talking on the radio, not with a phone. He wasn't using a phone. He was only talking on the radio. Mm. And from there, I was, I went back again to Darwin, to my course. I stopped there for five years, then I came back and went back again. We came back on and we stayed there for a long time now. Here you are, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for the board members from Pinnaby Homeland Health Service. They're turning 30 next year. Their 30th anniversary is next year, one of our strongest and most um, remotest clinics, I might add. It's always great to go out there for board meetings. Amsant's Pinnaby hosted Amsant board meetings out at the clinic there, the new clinic. Uh, like 
Um, Scrum says, beautiful country, nice people, and um, if uh, our young GPs and registrars out there, you want to have a, have a crack at um, uh, delivering health services to some of our remotest and harshest parts of the country, then I'm sure Pinnaby Homelands Health Service would love to talk to you guys and get your, uh, your, your support and consider going out and helping uh, some of our remoter communities and clinics.